see it's still playing in there. <laughs> What's that all about? Get rid of the water. Oh, oh. to you today. Oh We're going to start out with the oldest girl in the family. This is my little Ginger. She is 30 years old and she was born in our family. Little Ginger is a European brown bear. She's actually a descendant of the original bears that came from Europe back in 1946. She's a very small female, but she's cute. Isn't she precious? When Ginger was born, she could fit in the palm of my hand, and she weighed less than a pound. That's amazing, isn't it? They start out so small and grow up to be such a large, beautiful animal in size. Now, we won't find a bear like this in Florida. Although Florida does have bears, we have black bears native to our state. The beautiful Florida black bear is Ginger's cousin. There's eight species of bears. But under the brown bear umbrella, there's different subspecies of brown bears. It just depends on what parts of the world the bears come from. European brown bears obviously come from Europe. That's right. But there's also other species. The largest brown bear in the brown bear category is the Kodiak bear of Alaska. That's the big boy. That's right. Now, the second largest is the grizzly bear. They come in at number two. There's also the European brown bear and Syrian brown bear, all different subspecies. They just come from different parts of the planet. Now, a lot of people ask me, how do you tell the difference between a brown bear and a black bear? Well, color comes to mind, right? But it doesn't <laughs> apply because black bears can be brown and brown bears can be almost black. But the physical characteristics that the brown bears have actually distinguish the difference between the two. The, the head on the brown bear is much wider than a black bear. The black bear has a longer muzzle and a narrower head. The brown bear also has something more prominent that a black bear doesn't have. Look at the hump on the shoulders. That's how you tell the difference between the black bear and the brown bear. All brown bears have a hump. Camels aren't the only animals that have humps, but on a bear, that's muscle. That gives the bear all that strength and power through their arms and shoulders. These animals are very powerful animals. Now, some of you may notice, well, she looks a little shaggy right now with her fur coat. There's a good reason for that. Our bears are shedding right now, just in time for summer. All bears shed their winter coats for the summer so they can take the warmer temperatures. Their fur acts as insulation to both heat and cold, and it helps to regulate their body temperatures. Their fur is very soft. It sure is. I wish I could let you touch her. She's a cutie. <laughs> Any questions about Ginger? Any questions? How old is she now? She's 30 years old. 30 years. Now, in the bear world, that's old. In the wild, they usually don't live that long. Their average lifespan in the wild is 18 to 25 years if they're lucky. In our family, our bears outlive the wild ones because they're fed every day. They get veterinary care. They don't have to live out in the elements or scrounge for food. So that's why they outlive the wild ones. Mm -hmm. Veterinary care. Several times a year, the bears get checkups from a licensed exotic animal veterinarian that specializes in large animal, zoo animals like tigers, lions, elephants, and bears. So our bears get checkups. Now, although Ginger is 30 years old, she has a little arthritis, and that's normal for bears when they get into their mid to upper 20s. 
just like people. So she takes glucosamine every day and she stays very active. She likes to swim and play. I take her over to the pond where she can do some real serious swimming and she likes that too. She's in good health right now and I, hopefully she will live another 10 years, anywhere from uh, five to 10 years more. She's my baby. Any more questions about Ginger? How much does she weigh and how much food does she eat daily? She weighs about 250 pounds, between 225 and 250. Now that's not a real big bear. Her mama bear was actually twice her size. That's right, we had her mother and father. And it um, depends on the size of the bear how much food they eat. Of course, a smaller bear doesn't eat as much as a bigger bear. But um, this time of year, our bears eat two meals a day, but their appetites are starting to increase. Why is that? Well, their brain is telling their body, biologically, to put some fat on for next winter. So you see, all during the summer and early fall, the bears have a very ravenous appetite. They don't know that I'm going to feed them next winter, so they have to prepare for hibernation. Although our bears don't hibernate a true hibernation here in Florida, neither does the Florida black bear. That's because we don't have ice and snow, so the vegetation is available year-round for the bears to eat in the wild. So they don't go into a true hibernation, but the bears in the winter get a little bit sleepier, and my bears do too. They eat a little bit less and they'll wake up in the morning have breakfast and come out and swim a little bit then they'll go and take a nap but now that the summer is here they're gonna their appetites are starting to increase so they're going to eat three meals a day and a lot of snacks so that's pretty interesting it is all right i'm going to move next door and introduce you to the bear next door thank you ginger now i'd like you to meet carol come on over here carol carol is also a european brown bear and believe it or not, she's Ginger's sister. She is 25 years old. Well, five years younger than Ginger. And they're not together because they're not really compatible. Bears are solitary animals in the wild. The only time you see bears together is a mama bear with cubs. Males have nothing to do with rearing the cubs. They only create them. As a matter of fact, male bears kill baby bears in the wild. Unfortunately, that's bear nature. And that's why mama bears are so protective of her cubs. There's predators out there, cougars, coyotes, wolves, and male bears. So what does mama do when she brings her bears out of the den the first spring? Well, the first thing she teaches them is to climb a tree. That's how she protects them from the predators. Mama bears are a very fierce protector. I always tell people, never approach a mother bear. She is, she will fight to the death to protect her cubs. Now, Carol is 25 and she's in very good health too. She's starting to shed as well. You can see her little fur tufts. Um, she actually did a Toyota car commercial. Uh -huh. uh, a lot of our bears have performed in movies and commercials. I'll tell you more about that as we go along. Jen Carol likes to learn new behaviors. So, it's important for them to learn things. It's mentally and physically stimulating. These animals are so intelligent, they need constant yeah. Mental and Some physical mind. stimulation. The mind's Think warm, about though. bears in Mine the wild. Too. How are they mentally and physically stimulated? By using survival skills. Mama bear protects her cubs. They have to find food. They have to find shelter. Well, that gets their adrenaline pumping. And they do use their brain. But in human care with us, we find other ways to enrich our animals. Training is a big part of that. Playing with toys. Having a natural habitat where they can go fish in the pond. That's all important to the bears. But the biggest, the biggest part is the exhibit is the is the relationship that we share with them. See how she gives me bear kisses. I love this bear, and she knows it. She's my sweetheart. Yes, all the bears are sweet. They really are, and they all have their own personality. Our bears thrive on the daily physical contact, loving, petting, communication, just like your pets at home. That's right. They know we love them. They also know if you fear them. These animals are very smart. Speaking of smart, I, I'm teaching Carol a new behavior. Let's see if she can do it for us. Carol, let's show off a little bit. Are you ready? All right, you take the hoop. Where does the hoop go, Carol? Where does it go? Where does the hoop go? Show them. There you go. Put it, there's one. How about the next one? Come on, over your head. There you go, Carol. It doesn't taste very good, I promise. <laughs> there you go. Let's give her a big round of applause. There you go. And a little help.
honey treat for oh. Kim. <laughs> yes, ladies and gentlemen, bears love honey. I don't know a bear that doesn't. They like to keep the bees busy. We give our bears a few treats here and there. They like raisins, peanuts, a little bit of honey. They love peanuts, actually. And dog biscuits. Well, these are peanut butter flavored. They love them. So these are their rewards besides a kiss and a pet, a pat on the back. They're such good babies. Any questions about Carol? She's a little bigger than Ginger, isn't she? That's her little sister, but she's a little larger than Ginger. She is uh, closer to 300 pounds. Question right here. Ginger and Carol never get together. They fight. So we have to keep them separate. Now, they did have mates at one time. Our bears here have mates. We want our bears to interact with each other, not only with humans like us. So we, we always put them together with mates. Unfortunately, Carol and Ginger's mates have passed on. So um, we had to separate these two, of course, because they don't get along. But I give them a lot of extra attention. And at their age, they won't tolerate another bear. How are you doing what is a mate? Do you hear me? A male mate? Oh, a male mate. Yes, a male mate, a male oh, partner. Similar age or? Yes, similar age, yes. <laughs> they grew up with a, a male mate. They had a male partner. Mm. Any other questions about Carol? <laughs> Go ahead. I put a leash on them like you do your dog. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I take them for a walk down to the pond. And there's fish in the pond, so they're able to fish there. Mm -hmm. I also walked it along our fence line because we have a lot of wild black rasp blackberries that grow in June and July. And I'll walk the bears down there and they'll pick them off the bushes. <laughs> they love black they love berries, oh. all kinds of berries. In fact she left her package here of blackberries. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions about Carol? All right, well, we're going to go on down and meet our grizzly bear, okay? So I'm going to meet you down over at the fence by the pond. She's One waiting question, for you. has Carol had any babies? Uh, no, she hasn't. Ginger had one baby one time. We control our breeding here. So um, we, don't, we don't breed our bears every year because we've been taking bears in that need homes. We're licensed to adopt bears that need a home. We have five acres of woods back here. I'd like to make a nature trail and get some black bears, Florida black bears, to have a nice place back here. All right, I'm going to meet you down there. Yeah. I got treats for you, Lucy. This is Lucy. She's our female grizzly bear. She's nine years old, and she was adopted into our family. Lucy came to us from a facility that closed down in Georgia, the Black Forest Bear Park, and she was almost a year old when we got her. Hi, baby. And she's doing real good. She's got a really good personality. And we've got a good close bond, don't we? Yes, thank you. My Lucy. Isn't she beautiful? A grizzly bear. Most people don't know that the grizzly bear is a brown bear. They think that's a whole separate species. Actually, there are subspecies of the brown bear. Um, the grizzly bear is really our North American brown bear. How did they get the name grizzly? Well, from the pioneers back in the 1800s. They noticed when the bears got wet, they had a grizzled appearance to their fur. Oh. <laughs> the, bear, the grizzly bear, and that's a true bear fact. The North American brown bear is the grizzly bear. The European brown bear, like the ginger and carol, all different subspecies. Once again, see the hump on the shoulder? So look at the colors on Lucy. She has beautiful browns, a little bit of gray in there. And then when you get to her face, she's got a gorgeous coloring, kind of a caramel color, and her ears are almost white. Isn't she beautiful? My little Lucy. She's named after Lucille Ball. Yes. <laughs> Lucille Ball loved our bears yes. back in the 60s. Oh, that's right. How you doing, baby? I got treats for you. Would you like some honey? Okay, here you go. I love how they just nibble out of her hand. There you go. Good girl. <laughs> little Lucy, she's nine years old. Any questions about Lucy? Go ahead. Just not about her, but about bears overall. If you met one in the wild, what should you do? Like Never run from a bear in the wild. They will catch you. They run 30 to 35 miles an hour. Wow, wow. Even the big bears, even though they weigh 700 pounds, they can catch you. Never run. If you go into bear country, I'm talking serious grizzly bear country up in Montana, Wyoming, and Alaska, go prepared. You can wear bells on your belt. Also, you can take um, bear spray. That is a proven deterrent. You can get it online or buy it out of sporting goods. 
It's made from pepper. It won't kill the bear. But if a bear is going to charge you, you've got to protect yourself. You have that bear spray in a can right on your belt. You pull it off and you engage it. You spray it. You don't wake them till the bear's on top of you because bears are super quick, faster than you can blink. When that bear looks like it's going to charge 30 feet away, you have that out and you spray it. It sprays 20 to 30 feet. It disperses in a fan-like manner, so it burns their eyes. The bear can't see. It also has, a it kind of restricts their esophagus a little bit so they can't breathe real well. Well, that freaks them out, so they usually run off. It is a proven deterrent, and it actually saves two lives, the bear's life and your life. Because when bears attack humans in the wild, sometimes they have to be destroyed. So you're really saving yourself and the bear at the same time. So carry bear spray, that's important. You can also carry an air horn. They've never heard that kind of a sound in the wild. Carry that and spray it, ooh, that's a real loud noise. Their hearing is very sensitive, so always go prepared when you go into bear country. You can also pick up a branch and wave it over your head and back away slowly. Go away, bear, you don't have to yell at him. They hear good, go away, bear. And you look a little bigger than the bear. They don't like anything that challenges them in size. So that's a good thing to do too. All right, kids, you sit. sit. Or a picnic basket. She's anxious for her. Kids. She likes the peanut butter too. Any questions? That's a good question. Any more questions? Yeah, yeah. You're very familiar with the bears. I spend my life with them. Yeah. I've worked with bears 40 years. I'm with them every day. If another person were to come and wanted to help you, how do they become as familiar as you are? Well, first of all, to work with uh, bears in a zoo or a, a facility like mine, you have to have at least a thousand hours of experience in animal care from a zoo or a facility like mine. You cannot just get in there with the bear. Okay. Um, and you have to be licensed from Florida Fish and Wildlife to be able to um, take care of these animals. So um, it takes a lot of experience that you need to get before you can even take care of these animals. Um, go ahead. But when that bear is first exposed to a human, what precautions do you take that you wouldn't be attacked or? Well, I know my bear's personalities. She could kill me if she wanted to, any of my bears could. But I don't want to give my bears a reason to do that. I want them happy, content, very, uh, you know, in good moods, uh, well-fed. <laughs> That's very important, they think with their stomachs. You know, it's all how you raise them and treat them. They know if you are afraid of them, they know, and if you're gonna harm an animal like this, I'm sorry, I wouldn't be standing here alive talking to you. These animals are powerful and they're intelligent. They know if I tried to hurt them, they'd attack me. So I don't want to give my bears a reason to be afraid of me or we have to build that relationship based on mutual love and respect. I don't forget this is a bear. I know what she's capable of and I treat her with respect. She's a bear first. And then second, she's my friend, right? <laughs> I want happy bears. And you know, they're going to live with me their entire life here at Paradise Ranch. So I want them to be happy and provided for. Everything we take in here for my tours goes back to the bears and our facility. I'm constantly working on this place. Last year we were shut down from COVID, like a lot of everybody was. We had no work. I lost all my work. All my tours were canceled. I had no income, but I did take advantage of that and I did some renovation. That's a new constructed bear house over there for the older girls. We just built that one. And also Fish and Wildlife changed their laws. So I had to go from eight foot fence to a 12 foot fence and that 45 in, in, inward. So I had to replace all these poles all the way around the pond, cement them in the ground, build a footer. So I had a lot of construction going on here last summer and it was a lot of work. Luckily I had a lot of friends that helped out with all the labor and uh, the construction. Then Fish and Wildlife had to come back and inspect the facility and make sure it was approved. So luckily it was, everything is good here with our bears. Um, they like to swim in the pond. We're a little low right now on the water table. That is a spring fed pond, so it won't get lower than that. But obviously we're gonna get our rain. It's gonna start coming soon and it will fill back up to the top here. Are Good question. Are the humans that can approach the bear like you? My, myself and my daughter, my son, our family. Basically it's our family, yes. There is no public contact allowed in the state of Florida with uh, bears. So. She loves her green. <laughs> They're ice cold too. They feel good. Huh? Yeah. What kind of vocalizations do they make? 
vocalizations, bears are very quiet. The only time they'll make a sound is if they're mad. Oh. They will roar out, but they don't roar periodically like a lion. They don't do that. They're very quiet animals. So oh. the only time they'll make a sound is when they're mad. They're fighting or they're grumbling because they're hungry. <laughs> they're very quiet animals. They really are. Good girl, Lucy. You're doing good. How do they communicate with each other? Um, they make different kinds of sounds like a blowing sound, puffing sound. That's how Mama Bear signals her cubs up a tree. She'll go and they know when to go up a tree so she can protect them from other predators. But, um, or they'll growl with each other if they're going to get mad with each other. Um, but otherwise they're very quiet. They have, um, I, I call it a telepathic kind of communication because another bear knows when one bear's in not in the good mood. And they don't have to make a sound. It's a certain way they look at them. <laughs> and their ears might go a little bit twerk this way. But um, I know my bears and I know when they're in a happy mood. If they get in a bad mood, 98% of the time they're great with me. The only time I have to watch my bears is breeding season. That's right, the females are cycling right now and they can be very cranky. <laughs> that's one time a year, fortunately. So normally, that's Bailey in the back. Where are you, Bailey? She went to the pool. She popped her head up. She's in the pool. We just put that pool in. It's an in-ground four feet deep pool. We're going to put a waterfall on it. We just built a deck around it. But I had to separate these two girls. They're usually friends, but now they're cycling, so they were fighting a lot, so I had to separate them for a few weeks. And then they'll go back together and be friends again. <laughs> they get over it. <laughs> but yeah, they live together all the time. But if you do fight each other, how, how do you separate them? Well, if it's a serious fight, you don't. You, you, yeah, you have to go in there with like a, a fire extinguisher. It scares them and they'll break oh. them up. But um, I don't want it to get to that kind of a fight, so um, it's better just to separate while they're in that kind of mood. Um, uh, normally, they'll, they won't will ever fight to hurt each other. They'll just like, eh, eh, you know, like little siblings or something, you know. They'll get a little crazy, but um, normally they don't fight like that. Just a question about using the deterrence of noise and so forth. And I see now that what I did when I was in their country was make a noise and dangling the pods. Yes. Where were you? Where were you? Okay, black bear. Exactly, yeah. Um, it, mother bears are very, very protective. If you come across one, and if she feels threatened, she will charge, definitely. That's why I also say carry the bear spray. Very important to have bear spray on you when you go into the bear country. Yeah, she was doing a little That's bit of right. good, too. That'll help save you. It's proven. Any other questions? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, well, we're going to meet my big boy. But um, since she is cycling, I'm going to take her in because she's not compatible with uh, my my other female that I'm going to bring out. So um, I'm going to ask Lucy to join me inside. She's going to go back in the bear house. Cool off. And then I'm going to bring out my big boy. Uh, he's a Syrian brown bear. If you look on our placard, you'll note it shows the range of where uh, all the species live on our planet. So um, I'm going to ask Lucy to come back and join me. Come on, Lulus. Let's go. Are you ready? Come on. Come on, Lucy. Come on. Lucy. Get some more over there. Come on. Ready? Come on, Lucy, come on. Come on, Lucy, come on. Come on, Lucy, girl. I'm going to go get my other guys ready and I'll bring them out. Come on, Lucy. Come on, Lucy. Yeah, good girl. You want some more drinks? You want some more drinks? Yeah. Come on, Lucy. 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 She's a female. She's our smallest one. Um, that's her twin brother, believe it or not. But male bears are always bigger than females. They can be 50 to 60 percent larger. Male bears are called boars, and female bears are called sows, just like in the pig family. 
Hey you. How are ya? You ready to go swimming? Yeah, I think you're ready, huh? How right, heavy is he? Sit up. Sit up. Sit. Up. And are you happy everybody's here? Are you happy? <laughs> <laughs> He's a real life teddy bear. He has to hear him? What a you can hear boy. him class. He's gorgeous. He weighs over 700 pounds. Oh, Bambi and Bruno are movie stars, ladies and gentlemen. They were used for Walt Disney's animated movie Brother Bear. Oh, wow. He used them to create the character animation for Coda and Kenai in that movie. Oh, they were wow. also used in a Tim Burton film called Big Fish with Danny DeVito and Ewan McGregor. They were a lot smaller then, but uh, they were used for background scenery. And he loves his cookies. Come here, pass it up. All right, good boy. Are you so happy? I have a pocket full of dog biscuits. Yes, I do. You hear them snacking together? Yeah. Oh, good boy. He's a handsome boy. He also loves sweet potatoes, so I brought them some sweet potatoes. He said it on his hand. Uh, we got the peanuts. Uh, and Bambi's favorite is grapes, too. He wants the whole bag. He grapes. <laughs> It's amazing a bear this size can run seven, uh, 300, 35 miles an hour. <laughs> he weighs over 700 pounds. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a lot of force. All our bears yeah. have their teeth and claws. We do not alter our bears. My <coughs> husband's grandfather said if we can't keep the bear in their natural state, we won't. We shouldn't have them. Um, oh. Does our bears go to the dentist? Yes, they do. We go to the University of Florida in Gainesville for any medical procedures that need to be done on our bears. Bruno had to go get his teeth cleaned um, last year. He also had to have a root canal <laughs> with the bear dentist at the university up there. They have a great vet hospital and clinic there, right? They did very good with you. Yes, they did. Um, he had, they did x-rays and they diagnosed him with malnutrition. That means his bite does not meet correctly. Just like a human, but you can't put braces on a bear. So his top fang actually rubbed his lower canine and it made it weak. So he was out here playing one day and he bit into a log and broke the tooth. Oh. So I had to take him back up there and they did the root canal. That was the only way they could save his tooth. So he has one little canine on the bottom that's half there. <laughs> anyway, he did good. He was good at the dentist. He got treats, a lot of extra attention, huh? Yes. He's a beautiful bear. He hasn't started shedding, but I can tell he's going to soon. She started. Any questions about Bambi or Bruno? How long you had them for? All their life. They're 18 years old. They came from a facility in New York. Some friends of ours have a bear farm. And um, their parents actually came from the Hagen Beck Zoo in Germany. They brought them oh, over. Huh? They bred them. And these were the offspring. So we adopted them. We took them in for the rest of their life. They're good babies. All my bears are good. Yes. <laughs> Any other questions about Bambi or Bruno? Are they still working there? Yes, yes, they still work. Yes, they do commercials and movies. Um, we're going to go and go to a summer camp next week at a church, and they're going to do an exhibit there, educational exhibit. So yeah, my bears do other things besides working here at Paradise. Besides being on exhibit here, teaching people. We have a relationship and a partnership based on mutual love and respect, and our partnership is to teach people about bears. When you see an animal like this up close, you gain a different appreciation for them. Some people like to get involved in their conservation because a lot of bears are threatened or are near extinction. So it's important for people to learn about these beautiful animals up close and gain that appreciation for them and maybe get involved in the conservation efforts. Because um, animals depend on us for their survival. Look at the planet and all the animals that are uh, losing their habitat. Here in Florida, our black bears have lost 88% of their habitat. Does that surprise you? No. Look at the development. Everywhere you turn, they're building something. Well, they've, they've gone into the bear habitat. They're building housing developments. The animals are losing. They're losing their habitat. They're being squeezed in our state, too. So um, it's important. We have to preserve what's left so they can survive for generations. All right, well, I'm going to let these two go swimming because when I walk away with the food, they'll lose interest and go back out there. <laughs> they like to swim. Go ahead. Can you entice them to go in the water? Oh, yeah, they'll go in. Sometimes I go in with them, but I always put a wetsuit on because the fish nibble. <laughs> they nibble on my legs. I don't like that feeling. <laughs> it freaks me out. 
But yeah, they'll go in. They'll go in shortly. He's going to eat a sweet potato now. And they'll be in the, pool very, in the pond very shortly. I guarantee it. On a day like this, yeah. Got to wait 20 minutes pond. after eating. Pardon me? Got to wait 20 minutes after eating. Yeah. <laughs> Tell him that. <laughs> All right, any more questions about these two? All right, little baby back there. She's a European brown bear. And she was also adopted too. She is six years old. And she's the one that usually lives with Lucy. Okay. All right, I'm going to go back out. I'm going to wash up and um, Jacaranda Trace. It's just about lunchtime, so I'm going to leave the bear. He was just like that. Look at that. I was working. He was just looking for me. <laughs> you mean bear. Yeah, I think it's... She's about to go in too. I missed it. I got it, but I was zoomed out. Picking mud up from the bottom. <laughs> Looks like he was flexing a muscle. He's being a gator bear now. That's fun. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> under the water. There we go. There we go. Blowing bubbles. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you get stuck, buddy. So they live right there. He's, he's hanging yes. out in the, in, 
in the little kind of want to ask her if she ever brings it. See anything hanging on the palm? I would. That would be. Look at them, there's another one over there. You know, bring them inside. You see, that's the girl, that's the boy. Yeah, that's the girl, and the bigger one is a boy. I think his name is Bruce or something. You like the bears? Uh, it's, it's it's like where you she like informs you on on like how to like. Interact with bears in the water, but you don't have to have it like. Yeah, she informs you how to don't. Yeah. I just wanted a couple of pictures on my phone too, so I could send them to my the other ones that were scary. Because I can show everybody the videos after. Yeah, she's rolling around in there too. Oh. <laughs> she's doing alligator berry too. Look at her. Zoom in on her. Let me use the top of that. She's so cute. That was nine years old. You can tell the faces that he looks more masculine. Yeah. You know, like he's he's bulkier, where she's a little bit more sleek. Yeah. Having fun. You gonna give us a big yawn again here? I don't know. Yeah, these are them. These are what they're based off of. They're based off of. No. I would think so. I was gonna buy more stuff for her birthday. Oh, yeah.